All right, if you are celebrating the woman of God, that is good enough. But if you are celebrating God in our life, can we celebrate God better? Hallelujah. Lord, we are grateful. Glory to God. I want to let me ask your neighbor, have you been blessed? Let me find out from your neighbor, have you been blessed? And for those of us who are watching us online, let me find out from the people in your community there, have you been blessed? This is a special opportunity, and we want to thank God for the life of our Father in the Lord, Pastor E. Adeboe, and our mother in Israel, for this opportunity, not just to bless us spiritually alone, but to make us a full package. This empowerment period is a time for eye-opening, and I'm trusting God that God will move us from where we are into a double portion place where we need to be in the mighty name of Jesus. Can I a better amen in the house? All right. I'm standing before you by the special grace of God, and I'm standing upon this holy altar to bring you the word, Pathways to Financial Freedom. Pathways to Financial Freedom. I ask Holy Spirit that you breathe upon your word. I ask Lord Jesus that you open our eyes of understanding to learn new things, to open us to the new level where you want us to be. Your purpose, your desire for us is to live in prosperity because it's our heritage. I ask Lord Jesus that we will enter into this atmosphere and begin to function in this dimension in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to use this opportunity to pray for anyone who currently going through any form of debt or financial crisis. I ask that the Holy Spirit of the Lord will pay off your debt in the mighty name of Jesus. I see new millionaires raised in the house in the mighty name of Jesus. As their faith can carry it, I see new billionaires being raised in the kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus. We will be people who that would lend to nations in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Redeemer. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. I became an apostle of crying out loud in this end time for many of us in the kingdom to take our rightful place. I have seen that we are seemingly doing well in a role called the priest, the priesthood old, where we are doing seemingly well. And it comes to spiritual things. We take it seriously. But many of us are indisciplined with our kingship rule. Revelation chapter 5, verse 10. The day I came in, in a contact with this word of God, my life never remained the same. Revelation chapter 5, verse 10. And let me read it to you. I don't want to paraphrase it. Because the word of God is very powerful and sharper than any two-edged word. That's what the word of God says. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 5, verse 10. He said, And I have made us kings and priests, to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. And what I have discovered is that many of us are not playing our kingship role. What does it mean to be a king? In another version of the Bible says, we have the royalty. We are from the royal family. But many are living in penury today because the devil has successfully exchanged our, our kingship role for a slave. And many are living under, under what I call poverty. I'm praying for someone who is listening to me this afternoon that you are going to come in contact with something valuable that is going to change your financial life in the mighty name of Jesus. Can I hear a better amen? God is looking for young people who will rule in the marketplace. The apostles God is going to raise is not just in the kingdom alone, preaching the gospel, but we must be able to preach the gospel in the banking sector. We must be able to preach the gospel in the educational sector. We must be able to preach the gospel in the governmental houses and not just sit in our kingdom, in our churches alone. We must become kings that rules upon this earth. That is the purpose of God for us. And you cannot successfully rule unless you have the resources that comes with it. And that's why I'm trusting God that in the next 15 minutes, I'll be able to show you some very key things, principles that can help you take your journey from where you are to where God wants you to be. Because God desires you to prosper. Let me tell you a story. While growing up in the junior church, my junior teacher, I bless God for her life, but she keeps saying at that time that if you are rich or you are wealthy, you are going to go to hell. 
So she kept saying that to me that I don't want to be wealthy. If anyone asks, I said, I just want to be comfortable because I don't want to go to hell. She kept talking about the story of the rich man that ended up in hell. But the Bible says, the love of money, love of money is the root of all evil. Not the money itself. When our, when our Lord Jesus Christ was on earth, 256 places in the Bible, he talks about the issue of money. Because he understood what the power of money can do. And as believers, we are not meant to be controlled by money. Rather, we are meant to control money. How am I so sure? God established it in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 17 to 18. The Bible says that he has given us power to make wealth. There is no one who is going to make wealth the pathway, the right way, that will not need God to make that wealth. I've always asked myself, what do I have that God has not given to me? God has given every one of us the ability to make wealth. But can I ask you, what are you doing with that ability? The ability to some of all is the skill set. Thank God for the previous speakers that have spoken. One of them mentioned your skill, upgrading your skills. What are you doing with the value that God has given to you? Because in the marketplace, what you can exchange in the marketplace is not because you are black or white. What you can exchange in the marketplace is the value you produce. What contribution are you making? If you are an employer in an organization, you are paid to the tune of the value your employer expected from you. And that's the, that's the value they place on you. The salary they place you is that value. What value are you producing? Are you part of the problem of this nation? Or you, have, you, are, you want to become the solution to our generation? Because the world is waiting for those who have solutions. And they will definitely pay for it. Those who have been paid today are problem solvers. Nobody play, pays a complainer in any nation. So I'm trusting God that your eyes will be open to a multi-million dollars, you know, ideas that is going to bring solution to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Yesterday, Daddy was requesting us to contribute just one million dollars. Such announcement should not be going out if we are in our rightful place. You go to Daddy and say, Daddy, don't announce again. I'm going to take care of it. Because God is looking for kingdom partners. And we are capable of doing it. How did I become so passionate about finance that the Jews said, we are going to have an auditorium as the size of Ibadan City in western part of Nigeria to supply just transportation alone within that same city requires a lot of money. And as we began to pray, who are the people that are going to raise that money? Are we waiting for them to come? God is depending on us. But if we don't get it right, we won't be able to deliver God's agenda. God never give a vision without making provision for it. The problem is, who are the people who are ready to make the provision? Pathways to financial freedom. There are three stages in the art of making wealth. Three stages, and I'm going to discuss with you very quickly. I call it MMM, not the one you did some time ago, where you all lost money. My own MMM is that the first stage is making money. The second stage is managing money. And the third stage is multiplying money. These are biblical principles that are established in the word of God. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 20. Proverbs 21, verse 20. The Bible says, The wise have wealth and luxury, but fools spend all they have. Fools spend everything that comes to them. You don't find a diligent man lacking anything. Because the Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 22 verse 29, Have you seen a diligent man? He will not be standing before mere men, but he will be standing before kings. Men who understood the times that we live in. A recent research says that 95% of the population have 5% of the wealth of, of the world. If you go online, you can find these things. They are fact. 95% of the population of the world are playing with 5% of the wealth of the world. Ask me where the remaining 95 is. The remaining 95 is sitting with 5% of, 5 of the population. Can I tell you the category of people who are sitting there? 60% of that population are employees working for other people and expecting income. 35% of them are self-employed who are running their own business. But do you know, interestingly, the remaining 4% of people 
who owns the 95% of the wealth of the world, 4% of them are entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs is different from a self-employed person. Entrepreneurs are people who are providing solutions constantly. People who are looking at the complaints that people are making and providing solution to that complaint. And do you know the interesting thing? The 1% out of that 5%, they are investors. People who use their resources to support solutions. Go and check it. First 10 people, the first rich 10 people, come to Africa. The number one person in Africa. They are not people that are people who are paying. They are people who are paying others. I hear in my spirit, God is going to catapult someone here into that 5% in the mighty name of Jesus. Out of making money, very quickly, out of making money. How do you come with the ideas of making money? If you're a student in the house, how can you start any while you are still in school? My first solution to you is that you need to stop thinking about yourself. Stop thinking about yourself. Anyone who wants to make money, anyone who wants to provide a solution, must think about others. The day I started listening to the complaints of people around me, that was the beginning of business ideas to me. When people complain about what is not going on right, you need to think, how can I provide a solution to it? When you provide a solution to it, people are definitely going to pay you for it. During COVID, I had the opportunity of staying on redemption camp because that was the safest place to stay on earth. If you are wise, you know that if you are in redemption camp, you are saved. God gave our Father in the Lord a word. He said, no one among us is going to die except the ones that their time is up. I left Lekki and I came to redemption camp and spent some time with him here. While we are here, riding bicycle, playing around, people are even afraid to leave their homes from those estates to come to Canaan land to buy stuff. And while people are complaining, I told one of the guys who are riding by together, I said, this is money in your hand. You can make money here. I said, how? Oh. I said, go to them. Take their orders. Go to Canaan land. Buy those things and take it to them. Today, he has registered his logistic company. He's not only delivering redemption camp now. He has gone as far as Edo State to deliver some items. He's a student. He has, he, I think he's in his 300 level. He's somewhere around in the auditorium. Think about other people's problem and you become a solution. Stop thinking about yourself. Because once you can solve the problem that people are looking for, then that's your breakthrough. And somebody may tell me, oh, I'm not in the art of doing business or starting business. It's okay. Your own business may be managing other people's businesses. Can I say that again? Your own business may be managing other people's businesses. Because you have MD CEOs who are living large. Because they are managing other people's businesses. So that kind of employee is not an employee who is waiting for salary. He's thinking like an entrepreneur. He owns that job as if that job belongs to him. And his disposition at work will be different from every other person. Why are we advantaged? The Bible says the ten times spirit of excellence that God gave Daniel is available to us. It means that we are not just getting double. We can be super, super, super excellent. More than every other person that we are playing with in the, in the marketplace. But yet, if you don't key into what God has given you, you will never actualize it. You must understand that if you are to make money, you must have a plan, have a vision that is written down. Be determined on what you need to do. And be persistent with it. Be persistent. I go on social media and see some of these guys that are making money. Some of them are not even funny. But they are doing it every day. They keep putting content every day. And before you know it, you don't laugh today, tomorrow you laugh. The day you don't laugh, it will abuse you that you are not laughing and you will laugh. And yet, crowd will keep coming. And many of us, we use our WhatsApp status. We use our whatever social media account. You are just posting not only your own picture. When there are businesses to make. Can I give you an idea on that WhatsApp status? There are people who are going, the language, permit me to use that, jackpying to other nations. You know, you can go to U.S. and be useless. And you can go to U.K. and never be okay. They are moving out, leaving dream jobs. People are resigning from Chevron, resigning from big banks for greener pastures, so to say. And they are selling off their cars, selling off those things in the half of the price. And some of them are leaving your community. And you don't have their WhatsApp group. You can post those things up on your WhatsApp status and start selling what you don't have. And people will pay you commission for it. Be wise. Be wise. In the art of making money, 
there are some few things that you need to ask yourself where do i want to play where do i want to play where do i want to really play because if you take one just one subject and master it people will pay you for it if you master one thing people will pay you for it pay attention to it research about it go look for it go look for the solution you may not be the one who has the solution if you find someone who has the solution you can partner with it because the new competition in our generation now is collaboration you must collaborate with people second thing is managing not just making and the money is coming in and you don't know how the money is getting away from it the art of managing money is so important that i said that money is not only a tool it will take you wherever you wish to go but if you if, if, but it will not replace you as the driver if you don't know how to manage their resources in your hand he has wings he can fly away so what do you need to do you need to sit down have a simple budget i have seen many times when i come in contact with you and have conversations with people i have discovered that they are living excesses living above their means there are some things you have no business using right now i started something i call financial fasting on early, every month financial fasting so i do three months and then take a break do three months take a break in those three months i save about 20 percent of my total income how do i save it i put down what i'm spending money on what i call wish list and the one i call the need list one of my wish lists is paying for dstv paying for netflix paying for showmax paying for all of those things and in my financial fasting month i don't pay for all of those things i acquire that money together i become richer that month what are you spending money on that you can live without and not just mopping up the money you must have something definite you want to use the money for because if you don't have a plan that money will come and find its way out out of your hand what do you need to start doing not everything you can afford is good for you not everything you can afford is good for you because you can't go to market and use all your money to buy salt and put all the old salt in the soup you won't be able to eat it so you must be wise plan your expenses plan it before you go ahead to do it one of the dangerous things i want to share with you that can change your life but i hope you get the right knowledge of it stop borrowing people money for consumption you are not a bank bank don't give people money who have no ability to pay back that is why they're going to sit with you and take everything you have to pay back that loan many of you you are in financial distress because of the indiscipline of other people what do you need to do give what you can give but don't borrow any money for personal consumption what do you need to borrow money for borrow money to partner give credit into a business because it's going to multiply i have three minutes more so i'm jumping multiplying is your pathway to wealth and that's the art of investment you can't afford to keep your money with you one hundred thousand naira in january when inflation was 12 percent now the inflation is over 14 percent that hundred thousand is never hundred thousand again in your hand the value has reduced while i was in the commercial bank we laugh at those who bring their money into savings account because we as the bankers we don't even keep that money we invest that money on your behalf but you don't get anything out of it by the time they give you three naira on your three thousand account we've made about maybe 20 20 20 000 naira from that hundred thousand before we give it back to you don't save money in there look for investment to put that money in but can i tell you something before you go ahead to put money into investment have a good knowledge of what you are putting money into because you need to understand your appetite and the risk involved many of you take your money to go and invest somewhere and you have no knowledge of what is going on in that place and before you know it that money is taken away from you how do you make right investment why studying the organization you want to put money into you also need to find a financial coach let somebody guide you there are many graduates with first class and second class upper from the university but they are uneducated about financial life they are getting into trouble with their finances and i'm going to end with this i was speaking in a particular place and while i was sharing with them about a business idea a boy walked up to me and said oh sir i love what you have shared and i want to partner with you i heard you are taking some some few people in a coaching class i said yes awesome do you have an idea 
I can walk you through to where you can get an idea. And he said, yes, he has a business plan. I said, what are you doing now? He said, I just finished my NYC and I'm looking for a job. I've written so many CVs. And when we are talking, something caught my attention. He was using iPhone 10. I was using iPhone 10 at that time too. And I asked him, we have capital to start with. He said, where's the money? He was looking up to me, maybe I'm going to give him the money. I said, this is your iPhone 10. We are going to sell it. At that time, his iPhone 10 cost 200,000 in the marketplace. Second hand value. Cost 200,000. He has a business plan of 300,000. I said, I'm going to put 100,000 in that business. We will sell off your, your own phone, 200,000. We will raise the capital. I will give you one of, a, one of Android phones, smartphone, that is, not, uh, that is not iPhone, but you can be using that while we start this business. He never came back to me. Why? Because he's indisciplined. He wasn't ready for his future. Can I tell someone here? It takes hard work. And you have the favor of God and the grace of God to get to where you are going. Only if you are able to abide by these principles. I want to pray for someone here. The idea that is going to change our world. The idea that is going to put that resources in your hand. The Lord will release unto you now in the mighty name of Jesus. Because of the anointing that is available here. I proclaim that your eyes will be open to things that you have never seen before. That we put resources in your hand in the name of Jesus. Can we pray? Lord, we want to thank you for this afternoon. Thank you for your word. I know that there's someone here that has listened to this word and is going back home to...